So a control chart can also be used for quality management. A control chart will show us uh, that our measurement is close to the average, if it is close to an upper or a lower control limit. These upper and lower control limits are based on standard deviation, so they refer to the empirical rule. When we look at the empirical rule for the normal distribution, one standard deviation in either side of the average should be about 68% of the data. Two standard deviations on either side of the average are 95% of the data, and three standard deviations on either side are about 99.7% of the data. So when we are looking at the quality of our product, we have to say how much variability are we willing to allow? How much variation can we have? In this particular example, we are looking at filling ketchup bottles. And the numbers that you see here show that ketchup bottles are being overfilled. And we can see they're being overfilled by different amounts. These measurements are in hundreds of an ounce over the 16 ounce size bottle. And so what we have done is we have collected four samples on various different days to see how well we are doing at filling our ketchup bottles. So we've done the analysis for 20 different days and for each of those days we have four samples. Now we don't want to go based on just a single sample because there is some measurement error. It's possible that when we measure how much is in each bottle, uh, we might be off a little bit. So rather than analyzing each individual sample, we are going to look at the daily average. So the first thing we do is we do equals average and we look at the four samples over each day. So we're going to find that daily average for each day. And instead of typing equals average into each of these different days, we can simply type in equals average for the first one and then drag it down so that Excel will calculate the daily averages for us. Once we have a daily average, we want an overall average. So let's take a global average. So let's do equals average. And here we can do our averages of our averages to find our global average. This will give us a better indication of the entire population. That is all of the ketchup bottles. Whereas the daily averages were just based on individual samples. Now we want to look at how much variability there is from that global average. And so we're going to find the standard deviation. In Excel, that is equals STDEV, open parentheses. And then we want to look at variability in our daily averages. So let's do the standard deviation for each day. So we've found that the average filling of a ketchup bottle is 54 hundredths of an ounce over 16 ounces. And that on average, how far we are from that global average is within 21 hundredths of an ounce. Now we want to create our upper and lower control limits. To create your upper and lower control limits, we need to take our average, our global average, and then we're going to add three times the standard deviation. That'll give us an upper control limit and a lower control limit that should account for 99.7% 99 of the data. To get the lower control limit, we need the average minus three times the standard deviation. Okay. So that lower control limit allows for sometimes for the bottle to be not fully filled at the 16 ounces. So it allows for a tiny bit less than the 16 ounces. So remember this is in hundreds of an ounce. So that we can plot how well we are filling these ketchup bottles compared to the average, the upper control limit, and the lower control limit, what you want to do in Excel is create an entire column that shows the upper control, lower control, and average. So the upper control limit, we're just going to do equals and select our calculation for the upper control limit. If you go into that, 
and put a dollar sign before the letter and before the number. Then when you drag that number down, you'll see it doesn't change at all. So we're able to copy that number into all of these locations. Our lower control limit, same thing, let's do equals and select that lower control. And because we want to drag the number down without it changing, we put dollar signs before the letters and the numbers. And then we drag the information down and you'll see it doesn't change. We can also include the average on our graph. So let's do equals average, select that global average we calculated and put dollar signs before the letters and the numbers so we can drag that down as well. So we're going to plot our daily averages, our upper control limit, our lower control limit, and our overall average. So let's highlight those columns and let's go to insert and we can insert a line graph. Okay. So that we can see the information. Let's just make it bigger here. When you are looking at a control chart, you want to identify any time you fall outside of those upper, or upper and lower control limits. You also want to look for patterns. So for example, are you seeing that there's a number of points in a row, consecutive points, that are all above the average? Is there a number of consecutive points that are all below the average? This would indicate that something was happening during that period of time. So for that, those samples, it was really overfilling the ketchup bottle or really underfilling the ketchup bottle. So it leads us to ask questions. We really want this to look like randomness. Okay. Now we do notice with this particular example, we're not above the upper and lower control limits, but we do have a peak here at seven where we're almost at that upper control limit. So really the question is to ask what is happening on day seven? So if we look back at our data for day seven, what we see is that the second sample we took was three hundredths of an ounce over 16 ounces. So we have to ask ourselves first, is it possible that this is a transcription error? that really when we enter this information in, it was supposed to say 30 instead of 300. If it was really supposed to say 300, then we need to ask ourselves what's happening with our workers and our machines that the ketchup bottle was so overfilled on that particular instance. Now we chose upper and lower control limits that were based on three standard deviations. But if you really want to limit the amount of variability uh, within your production line, you can change those upper and lower control limits to not be three standard deviations, but to be two or one. This will help flag when you're outside of two standard deviations, which should be about 95% of your data. So we can see when we do two standard deviations, it's really flagging that day seven, uh, for being not consistent with our production on every other day. We can also narrow it even further. You can look at one standard deviation in each direction okay, to see what that should account for 68% of your production should fall within those limits. Uh, you can see that there are a couple days when we fell outside that and so the idea is to tighten up your production process to adjust to address the quality issues so that you have less variability. So for our ketchup bottles, each ketchup bottle should have about the same amount of ketchup in it. The question is, is how much are we going to allow in terms of extra ketchup or being short? Because we told our customers they get 16 ounces of ketchup. So are we willing to allow there to be less than 16 ounces of ketchup? And if we're going to put more than 16 ounces of ketchup, how much? But because remember, if we're selling ke more than 16 ounces of ketchup, our customers are only paying for 16, so we're giving away product for free. So this helps you analyze how much variability you have and to help address the question of how much variation will you allow in your production process.